Come on in. Welcome to Idled Out, where we talk all things Survivor. My name is Luke, and today we're talking about five big moves no one cared about. In Survivor, you generally need some sort of resume if you want the jury to vote for you to win a million dollars. And knowing how and when to pull off that incredible resume-building big move, the perfect blindside, idle play, or social maneuver, is what separates the great players from the rest. A well-crafted and perfectly timed big move can be a legendary, season-defining moment. On the other hand, sometimes players on Survivor think they're pulling off one of those big moves, only for the reception afterwards to land with a thud. No one there cared. We're all a little embarrassed you thought this would be cool. For clarity's sake, I'm going to hold off on completely pointless quote-unquote big moves that resulted in eliminations like War Dog going for Kelly or Missy going for Chelsea, and keep this strictly in the realms of idols, advantages, tribal council revelations, and social plays. We'll look at completely pointless big move I to see blindsides like those someday soon. All that said, let's take a look at five big moves no one cared about. At number five is Romeo's fake idol play in Survivor 42. Romeo is proof that it isn't how you start Survivor, it's how you finish. In the pre-merge, all roads on Ika led back to Romeo. He was firmly in control and the only person on this tribe who was never really at risk of going home. But at the merge, his game fell apart as his Ika tribe mates left him behind to join a larger majority alliance that he never really got the invite to. And Romeo was never able to fully recover his footing in the game. From the start of the merge until the final six, he only voted correctly once, and he almost always coughed a vote or two as a backup target in case the main target played an idol. For most of the merge, Romeo is an afterthought. He literally never factors into anyone's game and is quite frequently forgotten about, except when the other players are considering who would be good collateral damage for an idol. Down the stretch, Romeo realizes he needs to add something, anything, to his resume. Since at this point, his biggest move is now voting out a 19-year-old on day 9. So he comes up with a scheme to get himself through the final 5 vote. The night after Omer is voted out, Romeo makes a fake idol and then abruptly announces to everyone else that he has an idol and he's playing it at the next tribal council. Please clap. This is one of the most awkward scenes ever on Survivor. Everyone's just like, okay, it's final five. Your ticket to final tribal as a zero vote getter has been punched, my man. The camp strategizing this round is hilarious. Literally no one factors in Romeo's impending idol play. An idol at final five is huge. And even an obvious bluff from literally anyone else in Survivor history this close to the end would result in the players at least making a half-hearted attempt to work around it. But, you know, Romeo? At the Final Five Tribal, Romeo makes good on his threat to play his idol right after Mike plays a real idol on Marianne, as if the wind weren't sucked out of his sails already. When he reveals the idol as a fake and throws it in the fire, Mike inadvertently utters possibly the six most soul-crushing words ever said on Survivor. Good for you. Good for you. Okay. I know he was being sincere, but ouch. Omer's face says it all. Well, that was a huge bust, but uh, hey, at least you got out Swathy 17 days ago. At number four is, well, we'll just put Dean's whole final tribal council here in Survivor, Island of the Idols. How do you describe Dean to someone who hasn't seen his season? The closest approximation I can come to is, he's like a joke character in a fighting game. Dean is like a Dan from Street Fighter, but in Survivor. Does that make sense? He's not the worst character in the game. In some matchups, he might even have some viability, but you only pick Dean to meme. 
Dean knew heading into Final Tribal Council that Tommy had a strong social game and was well liked by the entire jury. So to differentiate his game from his, they often voted in tandem, Dean decided to hang his detective hat on big moves. If you're asking what big moves, um, me too. Dean believes he has not one, but two final tribal bombshells in his pocket, a legacy advantage and an idol, neither of which the jury were privy to. A final tribal revelation like this can have a big impact if played well. So this isn't the worst idea in the world, but this is Dean. We are midway through jury questioning when Dean busts out his first ace in the hole, his legacy advantage, revealing to the jury the one he'd played earlier in the season was a fake that he carefully recreated. But when Dean asks Jamal, who gave him this legacy advantage, to validate it for him, Jamal reveals that the one he gave Dean is also fake. Um, obviously? Advantages aren't typically written in pencil. Okay, okay, you guys didn't like that one. Well, what about this? Dean pulls out his idol he found at Final Five, revealing that if he didn't already have safety that round via immunity, he would have had safety. Tommy goes ahead and tamps down any paltry momentum Dean might have had from this by stating the obvious. So what if Dean found an idol? He didn't do anything with it. Dean ended up harping on his advantage-laden fourth quarter, but most of the jury did not care how many trinkets Dean found, especially when half of them weren't real and the only one he did use took out the jury favorite. It was a wild misread on Dean's part, but in all fairness, probably his best bet to get any votes. Overall, Dean's game can be summarized in two words. Huh? Huh? At number three is Angelina climbing a ladder to get an immunity idol and survivor David versus Goliath. Let's move from one wannabe final tribal bombshell to another. At the final six of David versus Goliath, everyone knows there's one last idol hidden out there and all bets are off as everyone engages in a mad scramble to find it. Angelina ends up finding a clue to this idol, revealing that it is hidden in a large rock face, and the show conveniently provides a ladder to assist the clue finder in snatching that idol. Let's go ahead and make a note here. The danger in finding this idol is supposed to be in getting caught red-handed retrieving it. You're on a ladder, up high, it's very public. The danger is not climbing a ladder. Nonetheless, Angelina misreads the clue and manages to climb too high in the wrong place and gets herself stranded up here. When Nick wins the final six reward and immunity challenge, he takes along Angelina and Mike, hoping to shore up a final three alliance. This reward is conveniently located right next to the cliff where the idol is, and a few glasses of red wine and some ladder climbing practice later, and Angelina manages to retrieve her idol. Well done. At Final Tribal, she uses this idol find and the fact that women statistically find idols less often than men to punctuate her game. Angelina didn't really have a shot at getting many votes here, but with regards to breaking the idol glass ceiling, the jury is buying what she's selling. It's an objectively cool feat. But then she weirdly starts harping on the ladder of it all as if using a ladder is somehow the part of this she should be proud of, how she climbed up a few feet in her hunt for this idol. Except according to her, it's literally 100 feet. Okay, 50 feet. Okay, it was kinda high up there and she ripped her pants. Like Dean, the jury can't help but mock her. I'm like, oh my gosh, Angelina's on a ladder. No one cared that Angelina climbed a ladder in her search for an idol, and her obvious hyperbole about how high she climbed made the whole thing seem even sillier. The fact of the matter is, most of us have been on ladders before. It's not something you typically brag about doing. At number two is Angelina getting rice for the tribe in Survivor, David vs. Goliath. Now, Angelina would never tell you this, but she actually studied high stakes negotiations as part of her MBA at Yale, which comes in handy at the final nine of this season when the tribe realizes their rice supply is dangerously low. 
As we saw earlier in the season, Angelina is an expert at negotiations, and she realizes this is the perfect opportunity to put a big move on her resume by proposing a trade of camp supplies for more rice to Jeff. Angelina knows from her advanced Ivy League negotiations training that you always start with a lowball offer, giving you wiggle room to negotiate a deal. That's why she's proposing a modest initial offer of all the fishing gear at camp, all the cookware, two chairs they earned in a luxury reward, also the hanging swing, and all the remaining tea and coffee from a comfort reward. And putting a bow on this negotiation, Angelina closes with an eager appeal to hear Jeff's counteroffer. Jeff obviously likes this cast, because if that's the tribe's starting point, he could have walked off into the ocean with their entire camp. But instead, Jeff counters with the most generous deal in Survivor history. He'll give them extra rice rations to get them through the game. If one player, one, sits out this immunity challenge instead. Before Angelina can counter offer Jeff with four players giving up immunity instead, she falls on the sword for her tribe and gives up her shot at immunity to get rice for the tribe. Angelina viewed this as an incredibly noble sacrifice and frequently played the rice card at camp to her mom on the family visit and in an appeal to go on rewards. At the final tribal council, Angelina repeatedly pounds the table on her securing rice for the tribe, which Davey calls her out on. I do have to point out that the whole point of a selfless act is to be selfless about Fair it enough. and not bring Fair it enough. up. Angelina thought that every time rice touched their lips, they'd think of her incredible high stakes negotiation with Jeff, as well as the sacrifice she made by giving up her one in nine chance at individual immunity. But players give up a shot at immunity all the time, and for much less. This could have been a decent play, but repeatedly bringing up the rice negotiation, as well as her sacrifice, really blunted the impact of a big move that was really only big in her mind. Still, it was actually Angelina's greatest move ever. Well, except... At number one is Angelina's fake idol and Survivor David vs. Goliath. At the final five of David vs. Goliath, Angelina decides that she really needs to secure those jury votes at the end. Sure, she's got her death-defying use of a ladder. She graciously got rice for the tribe, then never brought it up again. But she needs one last feather in her cap to really secure that win. Her initial plan this round is to bait the votes of Kara and Allison onto herself, then play her idol, sending Allison home. It's needlessly theatrical because she's already got the majority with Nick and Mike, and they have no incentive to give her jury clout with a successful idol play, so Angelina comes up with the next best thing, make a fake idol for Allison to play. This would accomplish three things. First, an idol emboldened Allison might switch her target off of Angelina's ally Mike and onto Angelina, 100% ensuring the safety of Mike and giving Angelina that successful idol play she wants anyway. This is genuinely decent strategy from Angelina, but the point gets drowned out by numbers two and three. Two, this was an incredibly petty and personal move. Angelina and Allison were bitter rivals in the game, and Angelina blatantly just wanted to embarrass Allison on her way out the door. Number three, this was also some of the most obvious jury pandering of all time. Angelina wanted a big strategic move to end her game and thought that convincing a desperate and already on the ropes Allison to play an idol she knew was a fake on the 1% chance it was real would wow them. It did not. The jury saw this for what it was, a vindictive attempt to twist the knife in Allison's side as she left. And any strategic value this move had was drowned out by the pettiness and obviously pandering nature of it all. Luckily for her, Angelina had her ladder climbing and her rice negotiations to fall back on. Got nothing else for ya. Here's a negotiation even Angelina couldn't turn down. Like and subscribe, and I'll get you more Survivor content just like this. Until next time, don't get idled out.